Hello guys, Kai here and today I continue the journey around the world of Illusion Giants. And if last time the video was more of a nostalgic, this time we are dealing with an airplane that has no intentions to go into the past. Illusion Il-96 is a wide-body long-haul airliner developed by the Illusion Design Bureau in the 1980s. The first airliner of this class in the Soviet Union, which moreover carries the Russian president. Let's return to our glorious predecessor. In 1976, the Il-86 made its maiden flight. With capacity of up to 350 passengers and a number of specially designed solutions, it could transport a lot of people at once among the country's main and regional airports. However, this aircraft has its problems, the main of which was the range. 3,800 kilometers or 2,000 miles. It was in fact a medium-haul airliner. The long-haul plane in the USSR was still the Il-62. It was, however, too small for the modern long-range flights, especially considering the real monsters already flying around the world. Illusion engineers understood this problem. Back in the 1970s, they were working on the project Il-86D, the long-distance version. This machine was supposed to receive new, more effective high-bypass and K-56 turbofans and fly for 9000 km or 4800 miles. The idea was to make minimal modifications and create the aircraft fairly quickly. However, during the concept development, it turned out that the use of the modern materials, the airframe modernization and the use of the newest solutions would significantly improve the performance of the aircraft. In addition, it was decided to abandon the NK-56 in favor of the new PS-90. The new engine was more promising and soon became the basis for the new generation of Soviet airliners, main of which are the long-range wide-body Il-96 and the medium-range single-aisle Tupolev Tu-204, the future competitor to the A320 family and the Boeing 737 and 757 models. The problem was the wing and pylons of the old Il-86 were located too low that the large PS-90 did not fit, which required, among the other things, the creation of a new wing. All these changes brought big benefits, but they meant that the Illusion Design Bureau technically had to create a new aircraft that only in general continued the Il-86 design. It was decided to do just that. The work continued for many years. The first prototype was constructed in the Bureau site in Moscow. In 1988 the plane was rolled out and after a rather short time in the same year, the brand new Il-96-300 made its maiden flight. The operations of the airliner were started in 1993. As I have already said, being an eye of the Il-86, the new plane is quite different from it. But what is the difference? Watching the design, the Il-96 is really close to its ancestor. But the devil is in the details. Let's look at it closer. The biggest difference is, of course, the wing. It is completely new. The design was made lighter with improved aerodynamics, the wing span increased. There were quite large wing tips introduced. Another nuance was the sweep of the wing. The Il-86 has a very high cruise speed, which is cool, of course. But this required more engine thrust, which increased the fuel consumption. The Il-96 wing is swept 5 degrees less, more straight. The speed has dropped, which is not cool, but the fact remains, the new airframe plus the new much more effective engines greatly dropped the fuel consumption and the range had grown. In general, this solution became usual for most of the modern commercial airliners. Less speed, more economy. The horizontal tail of the aircraft remained the same, but the vertical stabilizer became higher. Such a large tail is necessary to improve the stability of the flight, especially in the event of an engine failure. So, the engines. The plane received the new PS-90A turbofans, the same as the Tupolev 204. With the thrust of 157 kN each, they were on average 20% more economical than the Il-86 engines. This was a huge achievement, especially for long-haul roads. In terms of passenger per kilometer, Il-96 was almost twice more effective than the old Il-62. The avionics and onboard elements were also much more advanced. In the design itself, many small innovations were introduced, which improved reliability and aerodynamic quality. The aircraft became much easier to maintain. 
The diameter of the fuselage in most of its sections remained the same as with the EL-86, also the plane became shorter. The cabin got shorter too. Now it can accommodate a maximum of 300 people, also most often the airliners had a 3-class layout for 235 passengers. The old EL-86 could accommodate 350 passengers in one class and 314 in three class. The basic economy class layout is 9 seats in a row with two aisles. 3 plus 3 plus 3 scheme. During the EL-96 development, the Illusion engineers abandoned the main feature of the EL-86, the self-loading concept. The airports had already been sufficiently equipped to handle the luggage and seating people. And all those sliding ladders, luggage space and stairs between the decks took up a lot of space and added mass. As a result, the only features left were the kitchen on the lower deck and the lack of the central row luggage compartments. The rest of space was equipped by standard cargo holds and enlarged fuel tanks. Due to this ads, the plane reached nearly 5000 miles range. Control systems were also properly updated. Il-96 received a fly-by-wire control system. The cockpit was equipped with a new displays and automated enough, so that it would be possible to completely forget about the navigator. The crew was made up of three people, two pilots and the engineer. For the beginning of the 1990s it was already a pretty outdated solution. The landing gear was not changed much, as the runways were still not able to handle heavy aircraft. Moreover, the new airliner became 45 tons heavier. Unlike the predecessor, the Il-96 had become a much more modifiable aircraft. Therefore, in its history we can find many different ideas. Aerial control planes, the strategic refueling tanker for military applications. An interesting one was the international Russian and American project of the Il-96-400 version. The plane was enlarged, it could accommodate nearly 435 passengers in one class layout, it got the modern Rockwell Collins avionics and Pratt Whitney series PW2000 engines from the Boeing 757. That project was awesome, but in the middle of the economic crisis, Illusion could not sell the plane. And of course the VIP planes, which are still serving in a special flight group of the Russian president. Something like the Air Force One. Now the special group operates five of these aircraft. Totally in all these years the aviation plant in Voronezh had assembled 30 Il-96 aircraft. Twelve of them are used by the government, as well as in the airline Cubana de Aviación, one of which is the plane of the Cuban president. During the operation several accidents occurred, but there were no large air disasters with hull losses and human casualties. The plane is quite reliable despite the difficulties with the PS-90A engines. They are simply not efficient enough for our time. Now the Il-96 is entering a new stage of its development, the Il-96-400M program. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and don't forget to subscribe. Fast flights and soft landings to you.